So today I'm going to do something really basic, which is a stuck shed on a python. Sometimes they're for very little reason other than a humidity issue. Other times they're a great indicator of something worse going on. This is a green tree python mummified in its shed. And I'm going to show you a quick trick how to manage this and get the shed off this cute little snake that wants to hide. When an animal goes into a shed, it's building a new layer of skin underneath. And this is a bit, bit of a vulnerable time. So where really moisture is really valuable. It's pulling moisture from the body, it's building new tissue. It's also actually taking a lot of energy out of the animal. So it's a really good thing to spray animals down when they're, they're shedding. Also manage their humidity. Humidity, the, the available moisture content in the air. But sometimes you can do it all and it still fails. So a quick, sure way to deal with it other than just spraying it is to put it in some water. If you put the animal in too deep water, they can panic. And when they panic, they freak out, they'll swallow and breathe in water. They can asphyxiate in the water and it can actually kill them. It causes a lot of stress. So if I take this animal like that, I'm, I'm comfortable with about that amount of water. I really kind of like the water about halfway up its body. At this point, when the animal is done being scared of me, it actually might start going around there. Look, there's the eye cap ready. All right, so with there's just enough moisture I'm pulling off the eye cap. So just for a rule, see that eye cap right there? Yeah. That's actually a clear scale that protects the eye underneath. Note to self, if you ever try to start a shed on an animal before it's ready to shed and you feel it being moist underneath after you pull the shed, you feel like this lymph, very, very bad, you will kill the snake. So then what you do, you want to start the shed. And obviously, Try to that, that, can you tip it to me a little bit? There you go. Thank you. So at this point, it's still adhering a fair bit, but I know for a fact that this animal is overdue to have shed because it had begun shedding itself. It still needs some more moisture available for the skin because you want the skin to over time wick up all the moisture. So if I soak it, that's a real safe way about water about halfway up its body. Well, I actually, I saw something and I've never seen this actually being done, but we're gonna try something different. <laughs> I've like, never heard of them before. No, I know, I know about water crystals, but I didn't know about these things that bounce around and they're full of moisture. What happens? If I take this animal, and I put this. So in theory, it's almost like it's underwater, but there are spaces. I want to see what this animal actually does. It's like being in a ball pit as a kid. But, but I'm getting a little bit of moisture, and this is really wonderful. So maybe this way you can submerge an animal under something moisture laden, but it actually won't drown. When I take an animal, I got a bin like this, and I put it in this empty bin. Animals are cryptic. This is so critical. People have these ideas, the bigger the cage, the better it is. You're actually not adhering to actually the needs of the animals. These animals need to feel hidden. They need to feel cryptic. They need to, that brings down their stress. I have an animal that's in a stressful situation because it's got this dry shed and that stress, maybe of its environment, of anything, could also be some of the things leading up to that. So what happens in my little pea brain, if I took the animal, I put him in something that it actually feels pressed against it. That actually might give this animal comfort all while keeping that moisture next to it. You might be able to also do this. Actually, I know you can. You can take uh, sphagnum moss, moistened sphagnum moss, and you moisten it like a kind of like a well wrung out washcloth, and you create a very deep bed in there, and then the animal will go into there. But this actually might be more effective because it's really bringing a lot of moisture because I can feel this. It feels actually pr quite pleasant, and it's bringing it into contact with the animal. And I just want to try to see how this animal responds to this. I want to see if actually if the shed. Uh, within a you know, reasonable period of time if this shed softens up and if I'm able to succeed and get this animal to shed. Hey everyone, PNG Donnie here. So the minute Kevin left, I switched this over to a glass aquarium because it looks way better. Does it not look better? Hit the notification bell, guys. I know you guys aren't using it. You need to, or Kevin's gonna spank the crap out of me. He does, he hits me. What do you want me to do? Get a little closer. There's there's a table in yeah, my way. Look, oh, there is a table in your way. <laughs> okay. I'm like, what do you want me to do? 
Oh, all right. Yeah. Hello. There you go. All right. So 24 hours later, let's see if my ridiculousness even worked. I don't know about that, but you know one thing that's really cool? The green tree python can sit under all of these beads and breathe and do whatever it wants. So let's see if it actually softened up its skin. Oh, another thing. Donnie challenged me, uh -oh. said that I can't take this out without spilling beads everywhere. So he could be right. They're really hard to clean up too. So Donnie, here we go. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, it feels so cool. Oh, I got a couple. Hey, little green tree python. Oh. Look at that. Oh, you didn't spill any. I did. I spilled a couple over here. It was stuck in his coils. Okay. All right. <laughs> it, it is pretty crazy. He really enjoyed being prote like protected. He's actually <laughs> being better than he was yesterday. But, you know, none of it's going to matter if it actually doesn't work. Um, so if you peel the skin, as I said before, before the new skin is all ready and mature and it's still building it, you'll get like a sticky residue and that's a really bad sign. So if that's happening, you must stop. This should not feel all sticky. This is dry and smooth. This is where Donnie fast forwards all of this. All right, actually, it actually worked really well. All right, guys, it worked. It worked. Might be cool. I'm going to do it again, for sure. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, we're trying to fix this snake for somebody. This animal's in trouble. Very, very skinny. It also, look at its tail. So that's either. Wait, what's wrong with sail? It either got nibbled by a rodent or it has a struck, stuck shed that's actually, look at that, the tail's dead. And that little bit, maybe stuck shed, has now pinched off the circulation to the tail, and that's going to kill the animal. So we got to see if we can try to save the snake. So when an animal doesn't have enough nutrition, it will utilize all its fat stores, and then it starts breaking down internal organs. <sighs> this is tough. The good news, the animal's responsive. It's tongue flicking. If it wasn't flicking its tongue, it'd be more horrific. So what I need to do, I'm not even going to give this animal a chance to actually feed because it won't. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to assist feed it. Yep. See, I peel the lip. I go like that. Go. So you put, these are, I'm putting pressure right here. Put the pinky right between its lower mandible and upper. And I start twirling. And I just want to get, there you go. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Okay. That's a little, little cheese. I don't want to get, nailed by you. Okay, so what we do, very lightly, keep my hand, just, just you got to really be gentle. Because this animal, what we're trying to do is initiate a feeding response. Okay, so I'm using these forceps, you go down each side of the body. And what you have to do is to make sure the body's straight right there. And it has to be wet, guys, because it needs to be lubricated. Okay, so that's good. And you notice I haven't messed with the snake. If I sit there and just let this animal position itself, sometimes they'll start trying to... Oh, that's really good. Okay, the tongue came out. Really good. So excellent. Right there, we're good. So this animal is now... This is a reaction to feeding. This is wonderful. So I'm pretty excited about this. This this is better than I was planning because the animal's responding to food. A lot of times when animals get really rough shape, they do not respond to the food and there's really little behavior of swallowing. If the animal didn't want to swallow, what we notice is they'll just sit there and it'll try to spit it up. That's when I actually cause the animal to start crawling. Yeah. So we got them tongue flicking. This is gonna start the involuntary muscles, which are gonna just start taking this bolus item, so this defrosted pinky, and move it down the body. So if I cause him to her start crawling,
Okay, so a couple of points. Well, it ate that pinky so well with a little bit of uh, assistance. Why don't you feed it another one? Well, that's a worry because this meal is going to take a lot of energy to break down. It's going to use maybe a third of the energy of, of that item as part of that, but it also needs energy from the body. So if I put too much in there all at once, too much of a good thing is actually a real bad thing and actually could cause this animal to be dead next, tomorrow. I want to thank all of you that are part of our Patreon. And remember, when you're part of our Patreon, Donnie will leak out things early, shows you what's going on. Sometimes you get to see other things that I want to put out in our beautifully groomed YouTube channel. And he shows you the raw stuff. I want to, of course, thank Jay Muller, which I just saw at AnimalCon. Pick friends and deletes are also very valuable members of our Patreon. You guys are really nice. You're definitely extending a lot of kindness to us, and I think you're great for it. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!